Thank you for this new day of life. Danke für diese neue Tag des Lebens. And, uh, thank you that we can come again to the class to open your word. Danke, dass wir ein weiteres Mal zur Klasse kommen können, um dein Wort zu öffnen. And thank you that we indeed can lean on your everlasting arms of love. Und danke, dass wir ta tatsächlich ähm, deinen ewigen Arm der Liebe anlegen können. Thank you for your precious promises. Danke für deine kostbaren Verheißungen. You tell us, Lord, that the secret things belong unto you, but those things which have been revealed belong unto us and our children forever. Du hast gesagt, dass die verborgenen Dinge dir gehören, aber die Dinge, die du uns offenbart hast, gehören uns und unseren Kindern für alle Zeit. So we ask and pray, Lord, that you would help us to receive that which you've offenbart and that which you've revealed. Und ich bitte und bete, dass du uns das jetzt erhalten gibst, was du uns offenbart hast. And let your word um, fall into the deep recesses of our hearts. Und dass dein Wort in die Tiefen unseres Herzens hineinfallen möge. Ask for your blessing now in the presence of the Holy Spirit to teach us. Und wir bitten jetzt um deinen Segen und dass der Heilige Geist uns lehren möge. In Jesus name. In Jesu Namen. Amen. some things about um, the destruction of Jerusalem and the destruction of Babylon. Heute Morgen möchte ich ein paar Dinge über die Zerstörung Jerusalems und Babylons anschauen. Now, let's begin. Um, turn to Isaiah 21. Das ist dann in Jesaja 21 beginnen. Isaiah 21, it's a prophecy against Babylon. Isaiah 21 is a Weissagung gegen Babylon. And it's talking about uh, Elam. Es spricht über Elam. And Elam was a province of Babylon. It's part of the Medo-Persian uh, Medo uh, kingdom. Also Elam war Gegend von Babylon. Es war Teil vom uh, Medo-Persischen Reich. Okay, so let's begin in verse 1. Hmm. Which verse? Verse 1. Let's verse 1. It says, The burden of the desert of the sea, as whirlwinds in the south pass through, so it cometh from the desert from a terrible land. So, what do we have there immediately in verse 1? Let's come here direct in verse 1. Right, so the Wirbelsturm aus dem Süden. Yes, okay. Well, so got whirlwinds from the south. But what else do we have? Was sonst noch? Right. So the the burden of the desert. What does that mean? What's the burden? Also die Last der Wüste. Was ist diese Last? No, no, no. The, the, what does the burden mean? It means the talking about the prophecy, right? Diese Last ist immer eine Weissagung, eine Gerichtsbotschaft gegen jemanden oder etwas. So the prophecy of the desert of the sea. Also diese Weissagung äh, der Wüste, der Meere. So it says, as whirlwinds in the south pass through, so it, whatever it is, cometh from the desert, from a terrible land. Right? So... So as these whirlwinds of the south are passing through, there's something going to come from the desert. Also genauso wie die Wirbelstürme vom äh, Süden herkommen, so wird auch etwas von der Wüste aufsteigen. Right? Richtig? So in verse 2 it says, a grievous vision zwei. is declared. So whatever is going to come is this grievous vision. Also was immer auch jetzt hier kommt, das ist diese äh, schreckliche Vision. So a grievous vision is declared unto me, a treacherous dealer dealeth treacherously, and the spoiler spoileth. Go up, O Elam, besiege, O Media, all the sign thereof have I made to cease. So the Lord is now telling Elam, which is the Medes and the Persians, to go 
up and make seed, right? Also der Herr sagt jetzt äh, Elam, das ist Medopersien, dass sie heraufkommen sollen und belagern sollen. So, so this previous vision is to do with with Elam and Media going up to besiege, right? Und diese schreckliche Vision hat also etwas damit zu tun, wie Elam, also Medium Persien, dann letztendlich äh, hochkommen wird und eine Belagerung statt, äh, durchführen wird. So, it says, therefore are my loins filled with pain, pangs have taken hold upon me as the pangs of a woman that travaileth. I was bowed down at the hearing of it, I was dismayed at the seeing of it. Right, so... This, this vision, what does it do to Isaiah? Also, was macht diese Vision hier mit Jesaja? Right, so th this, this basically, the fulfillment of this vision is going to bring these birth pangs. Because when he sees the vision, this is the result it, it has on him. So it's also die Erfüllung dieser Vision bringt diese Geburtswehen hervor. Denn wenn er diese Vision sieht, dann hat er hier diese Erfahrung. So basically, whoever, whoever this vision is fulfilled against, they're going to have this experience, right? Also wer auch immer jetzt ähm, diese, diese Macht ist, gegen die jetzt hier ähm, diese Erfüllung sich, äh, oder diese Vorhersage sich erfüllen soll, diese Macht wird dann diese Erfahrung hier haben. It says, my heart panted, fearfulness affrighted me, the night of my pleasure hath he turned into fear unto me. Das vier. Prepare the table, watch in the watchtower, eat, drink, arise, ye princes, and anoint the shield. For thus saith the Lord, for thus hath the Lord said unto me, Go, said a watchman, let him declare what he seeth. And he saw a chariot with a couple of horsemen, a chariot of asses, and a chariot of camels. What do we see? Das Vers 7, also was sehen wir hier? Is that all you see, chariots? Is that all what we see here? Horsemen, camels, and asses, right? Reiter, Streitwagen, and Kamele. Right, so go to, um, go to the book of Zechariah. Or uh, Reiter, Esses, Esel, and Kamele. Gehen wir zum Buch Zechariah. Uh, the finger here, which in the Bible. Right, hold it. Go to chapter 14. 14. Verse 1. It says, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. And the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem, on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. Now, we've we gone through these things before, right? So it's Mark in the day of the Lord, which is the second coming of Christ, right? He's coming to punish those that was fighting against his people. Okay, now we just come down to verse 9. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. All the land shall be turned as a plain from Geba to Rimmon, south of Jerusalem. And it shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place. From Benjamin's gate unto the place of the first gate, unto the corner gate, and from the tower of Hananiel, unto the king's winepress. 
and men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. So this is God's people so it. now entering into the city. It's the fulfillment of the promise, right? So it's wie Gottes Volk in die Stadt eintritt, das ist die Erfüllung der Verheißung. But now I want us to focus from verse 12 forward. Lass uns Vers 12 vorwärts anschauen. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them, and they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor, and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. What, what do we see here? Das Vers 14, äh, 13, was sehen wir hier? Isaiah 19, right? Isaiah 19, so, gegen Ägypter, Bruder gegen Bruder. It's this, it's a fulfillment of Genesis uh, 16, verse 12, right? Das ist Erfüllung von mm -hmm. uh, 1. Mose 16, Vers 12. Mm -hmm. Right? Because, just keep your place there and go to Genesis 16. Also, dann fangen wir hier, oh, gehen wir zu 1. Mose 16. speaks about um, Ishmael and it says and he will be a wild man his hand will be against every man and every man's hand against him and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren so the spirit of Ishmael is the spirit of Satan right? the Geist of Ishmael is of the Geist of Satan this kingdom is just everybody wants to Destroy each other, right? In diesem Königreich da möchte einfach jeder jeden zerstören. So, when you go back to Zechariah 14, Wenn zurück in zu Zechariah 14, Vers 13, und dann Vers 13 nochmal lesen. And it shall come to pass in that day that great tumult from the Lord shall be among them, and they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor, and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. Right. Kingdom against kingdom, city against city, brother against brother. This is Isaiah 19. Right. Königreich gegen Königreich, ähm, Bruder gegen Bruder, oder Stadt gegen Stadt. Das ist Jesaja 19. It says, and Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together, gold and silver and apparel in great abundance. And so shall be the plague of the horse, of the mule, of the camel and on of the ass and of all the beasts that shall be in these tents as this plague. So, what's the plague likened unto? Womit wird die Plage jetzt hier verglichen? It says the horse, the mule, the camel and the ass. The Plage des Pferdes, des Maultiers, des Kamels und des Esels. Right, so go back to uh, go back to Isaiah 21. Wir zurück zu Jesaja 21. Vers 7. It says, and he saw a chariot with a couple of horsemen, a chariot of asses and a chariot of camels, and he hearkened diligently with much heat. And he cried, a lion. My Lord, I stand continually upon the watchtower in the daytime, and I am set in my ward whole night. And behold, there cometh a chariot of men with a couple of horsemen. And he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, and all the graven images of our gods he hath broken unto the ground. O my threshing and the corn of my floor, which I have heard of the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, have I declared unto you. Right? So... It's always been a bit of a mystery, this uh, here. But it's verse 10. But it's immer ein bisschen so mysteriös, was hier beschrieben wird. It's basically talking about when Medo-Persia comes up to punish Babylon. Babylon's going to fall. Right? Aber es spricht letztendlich darüber, wie Medo-Persien aufkommt und Babylon bestrafen wird. Babylon wird fallen. 
Okay, so go to go now to Isaiah 13. Okay, so Isaiah 13. Because th this is the punishment by the means on on Babylon. Hier wird ja die Bestrafung Babylons beschrieben durch die Meder. Okay, so it says verse 1. Verse 1. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see, lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain, exalt the voice unto them, shake the hand, that they may go into the gates of the nobles. I have commanded my sanctified ones, I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together, the Lord of hosts mustereth the host of battle. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord, and his weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. Right? So you'll see that this is speaking about the, the means that he's going to bring now to, to punish. Right? Also, Vers, bis Vers 5 haben wir gelesen. Wir sehen hier, wie er über die Meder jetzt hier spricht, die er bringen wird, um jetzt Babylon zu bestrafen. Und wer ist der Leader? Und wer ist der Anführer gewesen? Who's the leader of, of them? Wer war der Anführer? Cyrus, right? Kyrus. Cyrus is a type of... Kyrus is a type of Christus. Type of Christ, right? So this is the, the, the Lord coming, bringing his plague to punish those that had been oppressing his people, right? Just like we read in Zechariah 14. Das ist der Herr, wie er kommt und letztendlich äh, diejenigen bestraft, die sein Volk unterdrückt haben, genauso wie eben gerade in Zechariah 14. So just go to verse 6. I mean, you see, it's the exact same language we read in Zechariah 14. Gehen wir jetzt zu Vers 6. Es ist genau dieselbe Sprache, wie wir sehen werden, wie in Zechariah 14. And also uh, Isaiah 21. Und auch Isaiah 21. It says, How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand, it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. And they shall be afraid, pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them, they shall be in pain as a woman at travail. Right? That's what Isaiah, when he saw this vision, that was what he was saying, was he was experiencing, right? Das ist ja auch was Jesaja erfahren hat, als er gesehen hat, was kommen würde in, die, äh, in Kapitel 21. They shall be amazed at one another, their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Vers 9. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light, the sun shall be dark in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause a light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Therefore I will shake the heavens and the earth, shall remove out of a place, in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. Now, just... Uh, Come down to verse 15. I want to see this point. Yeah, it's a verse 15. It says, Every one that is found shall be thrust through, and every one that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravaged. So, And just come down to verse 16 haben wir gelesen. 18. Kommen wir hinab zu Vers 18. Their bows also shall dash their young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb, that I shall not spare children. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees excellency, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. So It tells us that it's going to be like when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Vers 19, also es sagt uns hier, dass 
äh, es genauso sein wird, wie als wenn Gott Sodom und Gomorra umstürzte. I was Sodom and Gomorra overthrown. Und wie wurde Sodom und Gomorra umgestürzt? By, by this fire and brimstone that came down from heaven, right? Durch Feuer und Schwefel, das vom Himmel kam. But we read here and uh, there's 15 and 18 that everybody's going to be slain, right? Women, children is going to have no pity, right? Wir haben ja hier in Vers 15 und Vers 18 gelesen, dass jeder erschlagen wird. Sie werden keine, kein Mitleid haben, also weder Frauen noch Kinder. Alle werden erschlagen. Okay, so I want us now to go to, um, go to, or should I say, um, but before we go there, just go to the next chapter. Bevor wir da hingehen, gehen wir zum nächsten Kapitel, Kapitel 14. Vers 1. Vers 1. Denkt daran an Zechariah 14, wenn Gott dort alle bestraft, da öffnet er auch das Tor für die Stadt, sodass alle in die Sicherheit gehen können. Right, so verse one here. Verse one. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. Right, same, exact same principle. When he brings the punishment upon Babylon, he opens the gates of Jerusalem so that God's people can go into the refuge city. Selbe Prinzip. Wenn er jetzt hier das Gericht über Babylon bringt, öffnet er hier die Tore in die Stadt oder in das Land, so dass alle jetzt dort eintreten können. Right? It's the same as the destruction of Jerusalem. When they come to destroy Jerusalem, at the same time, the true Christians are going into the refuge city. Right? Right? Says, For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve, that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased. Right? Now, it's verse 4. just go to verse 12. Yeah, to verse 12. It says, How art thou fallen from heaven? Wie wirst du vom Himmel gefallen? So what's this referring to? Worauf nimmt das Bezug? Sorry? No, 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 no I'm not asking. I'm, I'm, I'm just, based upon everything that we've gone through so far, What, what is this referring to? Sie sind auf allem, was wir bisher angeschaut haben, worauf nimmt das Bezug? Okay, why? Babylon, warum? Because in Isaiah 21, right, if you just go, go back to Isaiah 21. In, in Isaiah 21, gehen wir nochmal darum zurück. Verse 9. Verse 9. It says, And behold, here cometh a chariot of men with a couple of horsemen, and he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Right? Babylon is gefallen, is gefallen. And this is the vision which he's talking about, this grievous vision where Elam, or the Medes, is going to destroy Babylon. Das ist ja die Vision, worüber es hier spricht. Das ist diese schreckliche Vision, wo Elam, also Medo-Persien, kommt und Babylon zerstören wird. Right, can we see that? Can you see? Okay, go, go, go back there, so... And yeah, also Lucifer is the king of Babylon in this chapter. Right? Y yes, I'm not denying that, but I, I just want to see that it's talk about the fall of Babylon, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's why it's the fall of Babylon, because he's the king of Babylon. I will, we'll, we'll go there, but I, I just I, I want to understand what does it mean 
when Lucifer's fallen, it's talking about the fall of Babylon, right? That's what it's referring to. Also, weil Lucifer in dem Kapitel ist auch der König Babylons und deswegen ist natürlich, wenn er fällt, dann auch der Fall Babylons damit beschrieben. Okay, so, verse 4. Vers 4 nochmal. It says, Thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased? The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger, is persecuted and none hindereth. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. So you see, when the destruction of Jerusalem comes, a uh, destruction of Babylon comes, it marks the point that the little time of peace. Markiert ja, wenn die Zerstörung Babylons kommt, dann markiert das den Beginn der kleinen Zeit des Friedens. Right, see that? Can you see? It says here, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, no feller is come up against us. Because we understand Pass that. Up. That uh, the woman Babylon is the cause of all the trouble, right? Wir wissen ja, dass die Frau Babylon ist die Ursache für jedes Blutvergießen. So when the, the woman, when the, this Babylon gets punished, I, I hope everything rests, right? Deswegen, wenn diese Frau Babylon bestraft wird, dann wird alles zur Ruhe kommen. Right? Are, are we follow this. Kann jeder diesem Gedanken folgen? Okay. So. Uh, Okay, so go now to um, verse 16. It says, they. Okay, no, in fact, let's go to verse 13. Verse 13, doch, noch zuerst. It says, for thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation that says the north. What, what is this referring to right here, and who is it referring to? Also, worauf nimmt das Bezug, und auf wen nimmt das Bezug? Also, was wird hier dargestellt in dem Vers, und über wen spricht es? So, come on, that's, we, we all know it's speaking about Luther, but that's not what I'm asking, right? Who is it referring to, right? The, the papacy, right? Papst, the Verbindung von Kirche und Staat hier. Lucifer's chief agent is the Pope, right? Lucifer's Hauptagent ist der Papst. And this is this woman that sits upon the kings of the earth, right? Das ist diese Frau, die auf den Königen der Erde sitzt. Right? Richtig. <laughs> okay, so um, now, now come down to verse 16. Nun kommen wir hinab zu Vers 16. In, in fact, verse, verse 15. Oder noch Vers 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? Now, what causes the shaking of the earth? Also was ähm, äh, verursacht die Erschütterung der Erde? Wenn wir einen Sonntagsgesetz machen, 1848. Vers 17. That made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities. Vers 17. Right? So it was because of this sin that the cities got destroyed. Es war wegen dieser Sünde, dass die Städte also zerstört wurden. Okay. So, um, so, I just, I, I wanted us to, to, to see this point, right? But I wanted to remind us that the spirit of the, the Medes here, they, they spare not, they don't spare children, women, or, or, or anything, right? Ich glaube, dass ihr diesen Punkt hier seht. Und, um und nochmal in den Gedanken anknüpfen, dass die Meder und Perser, sie verschonen nichts. Ja, sie verschonen weder Kinder, Frauen, noch alte Leute. Und wir haben ja immer äh, das 
gedacht, dass das das Werk des Islams ist. And how, how would we back up those Und thoughts? wie können wir diese, diese Gedanken auch weiter bestätigen? Just from what we've, what we've read this Von dem, was wir heute Morgen gelesen haben. Wir müssen in der Lage sein, das zu verteidigen. Wir sind nur die Seite 13. Nein, sehr 13. But we are back in Isaiah 13. I'm just asking the point. So, what's that got to do with Islam? can't prove that from that. I know. No, you tell me why. Don't you to say me why not? I'm saying you can't prove that. Prove, prove me wrong. How do you prove that Revelation 9 is, a, is, is talking about that? Also, es wurde jetzt angebracht, dass offenbar äh, Jesaja 14, Vers 12, wie Luther auch vom Himmel fällt, das mit dem Islam zu tun hat, aber da muss der Beweis angeführt werden. I'm saying that we've, we've always said that Isaiah 13 is referring to the work of Islam. I'm saying, how can we verify that from what we've been reading this morning? Ich habe ja gesagt, dass, äh, wie immer gesagt haben, Jesaja 13 spricht über das Werk des Islams. Wie können wir das beweisen, basierend auf dem, was wir heute Morgen gelesen haben? Zum Beispiel Vers 19 aus Jesaja 13. Okay, there's one proof there, right? So what's your point, Peter? Ein Beweis aus Vers 19, also was ist dein Punkt? They punish as the same, or the punishment of the meeting of Persians is likened unto the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, which is called fire and brimstone. Right, it's fire and brimstone. Also Meda und Perser zerstören, wie Sodom und Gomorrah zerstört worden ist, und das war ja mit Feuer und Schwefel. Okay, and the fire and, it says, those that receive The mark of the beast, right, which makes you a Babylonian. Sagt er, diejenigen, die das Malzeichen des Tieres bekommen, was dich zu einem Babylonier macht. Just go to Revelation 14. Gehen wir dann dazu zu Offenbarung 14, was mit denen passiert. Vers 9. Offenbarung 14, Vers 9. So, if you receive the mark of the beast, it means that you bow down to the golden image, right? You became a subject of Babylon, right? Also wenn du das Malzeichen des Tieres bekommen hast, heißt es ja, du hast dich vor dem goldenen Bild niedergebeugt. Du bist jetzt ein Untertan Babylons geworden. Yes. Richtig? You got, you got to be confident in what you're saying, right? Why? Du musst sicher sein in dem, was ihr sagt. Warum? Why do you, why, why have you bowed down to that statue? Do you become a subject of Babylon? Warum ist es, dass wenn du vor diesem Bild niederfällst, dass du ein Untertan Babylons geworden bist? So thus saith the Lord, it said it very clearly. Da gibt es ein Stück geschrieben, so spricht der Herr, wo es das sehr deutlich sagt. Okay. Separate your fingers, right? And go to, keep your place there in Revelation 14. Go to Romans 6 and verse 16. Gehen wir zu Römer 6, Vers 16 noch. Hat den Fingern offenbar. Mm -hmm. Römer 6, Vers 16. It says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So what does that tell us, that, that verse? Also, was sagt uns Römer 6, 16? Whoever you bow down to worship, that becomes your God, either of, if it's Christ, it's unto righteousness, if it's Satan, it's unto death, right? Also, wo immer du auch niederfällst, dessen Knecht wirst du, ob, für Christ, also ob du der Knecht Christi wirst zum Leben oder der Knecht Satans zum Tod. So if you obey them to bow down and worship the image, you're consenting that Satan is your king, right? Also wenn du niederfällst und uh, dieses Bild anbetest, dann stimmst du damit überein, dass Satan dein König wird. And you will die with Satan, right? Und du wirst mit Satan gemeinsam sterben. The destruction of Babylon 
is the destruction of Satan's kingdom. Denn die Zerstörung Babylons ist ja die Zerstörung von ähm, Satans Königreich. Okay, now, now go back to Revelation 14. Gehen wir zurück zur Offenbarung 14. So it says in verse 9, Vers 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever. And they shall have no rest day or night who worship the beast in his image and whosoever receiveth his mark in his name. So, Why does it say that the, the torment uh, the torment ascendeth up forever and ever? Warum sagt es hier, dass ihre Qual für immer und immer aufsteigt? It's the unquenchable fire, right? Sie ist unauslöschliche Feuer. So you will basically not stop wailing until your ashes and the Du wirst also nicht aufhören zu brennen, bis deine Asche auf dem Boden liegt. What happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? Was ist mit Sodom und Gomorra passiert? The whole city turned to ashes, right? There was nothing left. Die gesamte Stadt ist zu Staub gemacht worden, da gab es nichts also zu Asche, es ist nichts übrig geblieben. Okay, so if you receive the mark of the beast, you receive the same punishment as Sodom and Gomorrah received, the fire and the brimstone. Right? Also, wenn du das Mahlzeichen des Tieres bekommst, erhältst du dieselbe Bestrafung wie Sodom und Gomorrah, nämlich Feuer und Schwefel. Okay, so it's, it's all about the mark of the beast or the seal of God, right? Mm -hmm. Es geht immer darum, ob du das Mahlzeichen des Tieres bekommst oder das Siegel Gottes. So, go back to Isaiah 14. Gehen wir zurück zu Isaiah 14. And back to the point that Fyodor was making. Zurück zu dem Punkt, den Fyodor noch gemacht hat. Because in Revelation 9, Islam is likened unto this fire and brimstone, right? In Offenbarung 9 wird ja der Islam mit Feuer und Schwefel verglichen. And they're also likened unto plagues. Right? Sie werden auch mit Plagen verglichen. What's, what's, a, what's a symbol for, for Islam? Was ist ein Symbol für den Islam? Yes, but in relation to what we're, we're talking about. In Bezug auf das, was wir hier gerade besprochen haben. So, Zechariah, you're not putting the pieces in your mind together. Go, to, go back to Zechariah chapter 14. Ich bin zurück nochmal zu Zechariah 14. Heute bin ich hier in Jesaja 13. So we just read that, that Babylon is going to get punished as Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Wir haben gerade gelesen, dass Babylon wie Sodom und Gomorrah zerstört wird oder bestraft wird. Right? And this is the punishment of Babylon here in Zechariah 14. Und das ist die Bestrafung Babylons hier in Zechariah 14. R right? Richtig. So in verse 12. Vers 12. And this shall be the what? Und das hier soll die was sein? The plague. Die Plage. Right? So this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that are fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. And um, verse, 15, verse 15. And so shall be the plague of the horse, of the mule, of the camel, and of the ass. What are all four of those a symbol of? Wofür stehen diese ganzen vier symbolisch gesehen? Islam. Right. It, 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 I mean, you, you can see that the, the camel and the, the ass and also the horses that, that marked, marked in Revelation chapter 9, right? Also, Kamel, ähm, Esel und Pferde sind letztendlich ein Symbol für den Islam. Also. And the Medes and the Persians in Isaiah 21 were likened unto What? The camel, the ass and the horse, right? Und auch die Meder und Perser in Jesaja 21 wurden ja auch mit ähm, Reitern, mit Eseln, also Streitbahnen von Eseln und Streitbahnen von Kamelen verglichen. Right, so the camel, the ass and the, the horse 
is the symbol of the Medes and the Persians which are punishing Babylon. Also the Kamele, Esel and Pferd are a symbol for Medo Persians who then Babylon bestraft. This plague that comes upon it, right? This plague that over it comes. Which is likened unto fire falling from heaven. Das wird verglichen mit Feuer, das vom Himmel fällt. Yes, possibly. I, I, I don't. I, I know this man the four winds, but the four winds is also marked in Zechariah nine. It's just marking the the symbol that Satan has been loosed. Also, das sind letztendlich auch die gesamten vier Winde hier. Aber das ist äh, einfach ein Symbol dafür, dass Satan gelöst wird. Fragen nur, weil Teil der Frage ist, dass sie gegeneinander kämpfen werden. Ja, das möchte ich auch gar nicht abstreiten. Aber das ist ein Symbol für Satans Königreich. Yes, the, cho the children of the flesh. And when you go to you just Kinder des Fleisches. You go to uh, Galatians chapter 4. Galater 4 kommt. Because I think the only way to understand this is to painfully go through this piece by piece and put all these thoughts together. Und ich glaube, die einzige Art und Weise, wie wir das verstehen können, ist wirklich Schritt für Schritt diese Dinge zusammenzufügen. Verse 21. Galater 4, Vers 21. So, it says, tell me ye that desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? So who would that be referring to? Also, auf wen würde das Bezug nehmen? The children of the flesh, right? Kinder des Fleisches. Those that think they can keep the law in their own strength. Diejenigen, die denken, sie könnten das Gesetz in eigener Kraft halten. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. So who were the two sons that Abraham had? Vers 22, wer waren die zwei Söhne, die Abraham hatte? Ishmael und Isaac, right? Ishmael und Isaac. So, uh, Vers 23. Vers 23. But he who was of the bond woman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. Which things are an allegory. For these are the two covenants. The one from the Mount Sinai which gendereth to bondage, which is Ega. For this Egar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with our children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice thou barren that bearest not, break forth and cry thou that trivialest not, for the desolate hath many more children than she with has a husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac were, are the children of the, the promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So what is what is it, what is it you have to do? Was müssen wir machen? Cast out the bondwoman, right? Wir müssen diese Leibeigene Markt auswerten. And this bond woman is this woman that sits on your mind, right? Diese Markt ist diese Frau, die auf deinem Verstand sitzt. Because Babylon, all the kings of, of the north, they always had this woman sitting on their mind. Right? Babylon und alle Könige des Nordens, sie hatten immer diese Frau, die auf ihrem Verstand saß. Okay, so you can see that it uses Ishmael as a symbol of the children of the of the flesh. Können Sie sehen, wie Ismail als ein Symbol für die Kinder des Fleisches benutzt wird. Okay, so, now, just go back, I'll try and make this point, go back to Isaiah 14. Gehen wir jetzt zurück zu Jesaja 14. Ich muss noch diesen Punkt versuchen zu machen. So, in relation to Isaiah, so, sorry, chapter 13, Isaiah 13. Entschuldigung, Kapitel 13, also Jesaja 13. Genau. These verses here, right, Vers 18. Vers 18. It says their bows. Who who has a who was an archer? Ihre Bogen. Wer war ein Bogenschütze? Ishmael, right? Ismael. 
Okay? And it says, Their bows shall also dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb that I shall not spare children. Right? And it's all, it's all about those that receive the mark of the beast or the seal of God. Right? Es geht letztendlich um diejenigen, die das Mahlzeichen des Tieres erhalten oder das Siegel Gottes. Okay. Okay. So, so now, just, uh, we're going to do a, a, a parallel. Go to Ezekiel chapter 8. Jetzt wollen wir eine Parallele anschauen. Gehen wir zu Ezekiel 8. Now, now why did Babylon fall? Und warum ist Babylon gefallen? We just read it. And why did it fall? Gerade gelesen. Warum ist Babylon gefallen? Yes, because they brought church and state together, right? Weil sie Kirche und Staat zusammengebracht haben. They were forcing all people to worship and bow down and worship the sun, right? Sie haben alle gezwungen, Lieder zu feiern und die Sonne anzubeten. So it's all about choosing between these two covenants: the one that gendereth to bondage or the one that's speaking about the the true Jerusalem, right? Also es ist immer zwischen den zwei Bündnissen zu wählen zwischen dem einen Jerusalem, das zur, zur Knechtschaft gebiert, und dem anderen wahren Jerusalem, das frei ist. So, uh, in Galatians chapter 4, it's, it's talking about two Jerusalems. Right? In Galater 4 spricht es über die zwei Jerusalems. Right? There's one that's of the flesh, and there's one that's of the spirit. Das ist eine Jerusalem, was vom Fleisch ist, und das andere vom Geist. Okay, so, uh, I basically want you to see that The, the, the Jerusalem of the flesh is the same as Babylon, right? That they're both the same entity. Ich würde einfach zeigen, dass uh, das Jerusalem des Fleisches dasselbe ist wie Babylon, dasselbe Entität. Okay, so when you go to Ezekiel chapter 8, zu Ezekiel 8, komm. Vers 17. Vers 17. Oh, Vers 16. Vers 16. <lacht> And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their backs towards the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east, and they worshipped the sun toward the east. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah, that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence. And have returned to provoke me to anger, and lo, they put the brines to their nose. Therefore will I also deal in fury. Mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity, though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet I will not hear them. What do we see there in verse 18? Bis Vers 18. Was sehen wir hier in Vers 18? The same words that we read in Isaiah 30, right? Selbe, was wir in Jesaja 13 gelesen haben. They're both receiving the same punishment because they've both been worshiping the sun, right? Beide erhalten dieselbe Bestrafung, weil sie beide die Sonne angebetet haben. So, these here, these have received the mark of the beast, right? Die hier, die hier haben das Mahlzeichen des Tieres erhalten. Okay. Stimmt's? But chapter 9 is the destruction upon which city? Aber Kapitel 9, das spricht über die Zerstörung welcher Stadt? Jerusalem, right? Zerstörung Jerusalems. Okay. Now, I, I want to see the close relationship between these two. And only, only as we really bring these things close together will we fully understand. Ich möchte euch zeigen, diese enge Verbindung zwischen diesen beiden Darstellungen. Okay. Und nur wenn wir alles zusammenbringen, können wir das richtig verstehen. So when you go to chapter 9, wenn wir zu Kapitel 9 kommen, you go to verse 6. Und Vers 6. So the five men with the slaughter weapons, right? Die fünf Männer mit den Schlachterwaffen. It says, slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children, and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary, and they began at the ancient men which were before the house. In fact, if you just go to verse 5 also, <laughs> and to the others he said in mine hearing, go ye after him through the city, and smite, let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. That's the same as what we read in <coughs> Isaiah 13, right? Selbe, was wir in Jesaja 13 gelesen haben. So, they're not having pity on anybody that's a Babylonian, right? Sie werden kein Mitleid haben mit irgendjemand, der ein Babylonier ist. 
Now, why can I say that these are Babylonians? They're Warum speaking about right kann ich hier sagen, dass diejenigen, die über dies hier spricht, Babylonier sind? Yes, because they, they worship the sun, right? Weil sie niedergebeugt sind und die Sonne angebetet haben. But it's the destruction of Jerusalem. Aber es ist hier die Zerstörung Jerusalems. Okay, Sister Wei says the destruction of Jerusalem is the destruction of the world, the destruction of Babylon, the destruction of the world. Right. Mal sagt, Zerstörung Jerusalems ist die Zerstörung der Welt und Zerstörung Babylons ist auch die Zerstörung der Welt. And what do they both do, these Babylon and Jerusalem? Was tun beide Babylon und Jerusalem? Yes, but they both sit and say, I said a queen and shall see no sorrow. Beide sitzen da und sagen, ich bin wie eine Königin und werde kein Leid sehen. Okay, they both have this same spirit, right? Beide haben diesen selben Geist. So you can see that in Galatians 4, when it's talking about this false Jerusalem, it's really talking about Babylon, right? In Galater 4, wenn es über dieses falsche Jerusalem spricht, dann spricht das in Wirklichkeit über Babylon. Children of the flesh, right? Kinder des Fleisches. Okay, so, okay, so when we when we look at uh, the, just, um, one second, I've got a couple of um, quotes here. That Sind ein paar Zitate. Okay, go go to go to Great Controversy, uh, 656. Mit großen Kampf. 656.2. Just yes, it's posted in just the the Germany. 566. 656. 656.2 So before before these men with the slaughter weapons go through the city and they are slaying women and children etc etc what happens prior to that so Bevor diese Männer hingehen und uh, hier die ganzen Leute erschlagen was passiert davor Yeah, it, says that the, it says there's a man, verse 3. Sagt er, gibt ein Mann in Vers 3. It says, And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was to the threshold of the house, and he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's ink on by his side. And the Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and said, He mark. Upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Also Vers 3 bis 4. <laughs> so this is the seal of God, right? Das ist das Siegel Gottes. So if you receive the seal of God, you won't receive the punishment. Wenn du das Siegel Gottes also erhältst, erhältst du auch nicht die Bestrafung. And the punishment is the five men with the slaughter weapons. Und die Bestrafung sind diese fünf Männer mit den Schlachterwaffen. So we just read, if any man receive the, the, the mark of the beast, He's going to receive the fire and the brimstone. Wenn wir gelesen, jeder, der um, das Mahlzeichen des Tieres erhält, erhält auch die Bestrafung mit Feuer und Schwefel. Okay. And Jerusalem was burnt with fire. Right? Und Jerusalem ist durch Feuer verbrannt worden. Okay. So, uh, go, go to this quote, the Great Controversy 656.2. It says, The mark of deliverance has been set upon those that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done. Now the angel of death goes forth represented in Ezekiel's vision by the men with the slaughtering weapons. So the men with the slaughter weapons, who does it represent? Und die Männer mit den Schlachterwaffen, wen stellen sie da? Okay, that's what it says, but who... who, who den Engel des Todes und was ist das? Where do we das? find that in the Bible? Wo finden wir das in der Bibel? Revelation 9:11, right? Warum 9 Vers 11? So the angel of Revelation 9 and verse 11 is the destroying angel. It's Satan. Der Engel aus Offenbarung 9 Vers 11 ist der zerstörerische Engel, er ist Satan. Okay. So you can see that it's the it's the Satan destroys 
the children of Babylon and he destroys the, the children here in this false Jerusalem. They're both the same, right? So Adon zerstört die Kinder Babylons und auch die Kinder, die in diesem falschen Jerusalem sind. Das ist in ein und dasselbe. Right? So, now just, uh, just let's go there. Go to Romans chapter 13. Lass uns da hingehen, gehen wir zu Römer 13. Because the, the men in Ezekiel 8, right, they were bowed between what? Die Männer in Ezekiel 18 wo niedergefallen? Between the porch and the altar. Right? Zwischen Halle und Altar. Now, keep, keep your place there in Romans 13, but just quickly go to, to Luke 13. Just okay. remind you of this point. Gehen wir noch mal zuvor zu Lukas 13, also halt den Finger in Römer. Lukas 13. Vers 1. Vers 1. It says, There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And where were these people when Pilate did this? Wo waren die Leute, als Pilatus sie hier erschlagen hat? Between the porch and the altar. Zwischen der Säulenhalle und Altar. And Christ said in verse 2, And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things, I tell you, nay, except he repent, ye shall likewise perish. So what's... what's verse 3. And, and, and when you, we, we went through this recently, and Christ is pointing these two things here that we're going to talk about to two different events. Und das haben wir uns ja kürzlich angeschaut. Also Christus über äh, diese zwei Ereignisse hier ähm, sind jetzt nämlich points it to two different events or it's two different events? Which do you think? No, it's, two di it's two different events, but he's pointing it to two different things Also es symbolic. waren äh, zwei verschiedene Ereignisse damals und weisen auf zwei verschiedene Ereignisse hier am Ende der Welt. Okay, so, because then he goes to verse 4. Und dann geht er nämlich weiter zu Vers 4. Or... Those 18 upon whom the tower in Salom fell and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all men which dwelt in Jerusalem. I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So the first one, the men between the porch and the altar were slain by Pilate, who's the symbol of Rome, right? The civil powers. Die erste Macht ist durch Rom, die Staatsmacht erschlagen worden. But Pilatus. When you go to, um, I mean, if you just, with, without even reading Ellen White, if you were to go to verse 4, the tower coming down, what's that referring to? Und in Vers 4, der Turm, der niederfällt, worauf nimmt das Bezug? To, well, yes, but to the destruction of Babel, right? That's where this tower was brought down, right? In parallel zur Zerstörung des Turms von Babel. Right, right. The, the tower is referring to this Babylonian uh, symbol of, 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 of Babylon. The Turm nimmt Bezug auf Babylon. So, there's two punishments that the Lord is warning you about, whichever camp you're in, right? Es gibt jeweils zwei Bestrafungen, auf die der Herr eine Warnung ausspricht, je nachdem, in welchem Lager du bist. And I'm pretty positive that Christ here is speaking about the destruction of Jerusalem and the destruction of Babylon. Ich bin mir ziemlich sicher, dass Christus hier über die Zerstörung Jerusalems und Babylons spricht. They're both the same, they both happen simultaneously, but they refer to, to two different punishments, but for the, for this, I, I don't know, but they, they both receive the mark of, of, of the beast, right? Es spricht über beide ähm, simultan, also pa passieren beide sehr, gleichzeitig, aber Jeweils beide erhalten das Malzeichen des Tieres. Die Leute, zu denen er spricht, die haben noch eine Möglichkeit, Buße zu tun. Aber diejenigen, die hier bereits bestraft worden sind, die haben keine Möglichkeit mehr gehabt. 
Okay, so it's something that, that happened, and it's a warning. So it says, "Ye shall likewise if you don't re repent." Right? Also, etwas was passiert, und er sagt, ihr werdet genauso umkommen, wenn ihr nicht Buße tut. Okay, so now go to Romans chapter 13. Let's go to Romans 13. In Romans 13 is a symbol of the civil powers, right? It's the, these earthly governments. In Romans 13 is a symbol for the earthly mächte. And this would be, in the sense of Luke 13, Pilate. Also, these Staatsmächte, and that would be in Lukas 13, the Pilatus. Gewesen. Okay. Now, I know that the evangelicals, just like the evangelicals did in the Second World War, they They told Hitler that this was him, and they, the evangelicals today tell Trump that, that this is him. Genau so wie damals im Zweiten Weltkrieg, wo die Evangelikalen Hitler gesagt haben, du bist derjenige hier, sagen die es heute zu Trump. Okay, verse one. Verse one. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good, But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger, to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. So when Pilate was slaying those, those men, he's the minister of wrath for them that do evil, right? Also als Pilatus dieses Gericht vollstreckt hat, war er ein Rächer, den gegenüber die Böses getan haben. Okay. So, Oder Rächer des Zorns. Um, another, another, um, so, anyway, the point, the point that I want us to get to see is that um, the, the Lord is, you have Jerusalem, in, in Babylon. So, also Jerusalem and Babylon. And both of them represent the destruction of the world. Beide stehen die Zerstörung der Welt da. They, they bo both this woman, right? Uh, Beide sind diese Frau. Woman, see. No sorrow. He says, same. Woman, see, no. Woman with her A. Woman. A woman. Okay, it says. The Frau, die kein Leid sieht. Okay, so the, the both the same. Now, when you When you look at the, when you look at Ezekiel 8, right, the punishment is the, is the same punishment that comes upon those in Isaiah 13. In Ezekiel 8, das ist ja die Bestrafung, die dort über die Leute geht, ist dieselbe Bestrafung wie in Jesaja 13. It, it's, it's both done by the destroying angel. Beides ist durch das, diesen zerstörerischen Engel durchgeführt. Right? And in, in Ezekiel 8, they worship the sun, right? In Ezekiel 8 beten sie die Sonne an. And The destruction of Babylon is because they brought church and state together, right? Und das Schöne Babylons ist deswegen, weil sie Kirche und Staat zusammengebracht haben. Um, the, so, which is the, the same thing, right? Das ist das And so, bo both, because, because of both these things, right? 
the destroying angel de destroyed them, right? Beider dieser Dinge kommt der zerstörerische Engel hat sie zerstört. What did what did these men receive that these people also received? Und was haben diese Leute erhalten, was diese Leute auch erhalten haben? The mark of the beast. Das Malzeichen des Tieres. Right? Because if you're a, a, anyone bow down and receive the mark or, or his image, right? It's either in your hand or your forehead, right? Das Malzeichen ist äh, entweder in dein, deine Hand oder dein, deine Stirn. Forehead means that you're fully in agreement with that system. Your hand means that you did it. Probably through fear, but you still did it, right? Also, Stirn bedeutet, du bist in Übereinstimmung mit dem System. Hand, weil du es zum Beispiel aus Furcht gemacht hast. Right? So, the, the point is that the, these, both these things had the, the mark of the beast. Beide haben dieses Malzeichen des Tieres erhalten. So, When you receive the mark of the beast, the punishment is the fire and brimstone, right? Wenn du mal Zeit des Tieres erhalten hast, ist die Bestrafung Feuer und Schwefel. Okay, so I, I think that the the the, the I, I'm, I'm not still not quite sure how to to really bring all all, all this together, but um, the point that I I, I want to make, you've got you got Luke 13, right? Also ich weiß noch nicht ganz genau, wie man das alles jetzt harmonieren kann, aber ein Punkt, den ich machen möchte, ist in Lukas 13. Christ differentiates between um, those that get punished by Pilate and those that get punished by, by Islam. Right? Also macht Christus einen Unterschied zwischen denjenigen, die durch Pilatus äh, erschlagen worden sind und diejenigen, die durch Islam bestraft werden. But I would say they're both marking the same event. He's just differentiated between the, 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 the two groups of people. Oh, I mean, saying that they literally both the same event describe. Markiert nur zwei oder unterscheidet zwischen zwei Gruppen. So show me another place in the Bible where both these. Um, No, actually, that that wouldn't be the the same. But um, the lion and the ass. Yeah. Yes, you are, you, you, and as in the First Kings thirteen, you have the story of the disobedient prophet. He gets slain by the by the lion. Also, Könige 13 hast du diesen ungehorsamen Propheten und der wird dir erschlagen von dem Löwen. Okay, so many thoughts that uh, you could think of right now, but uh, I don't want to detract off. But and da steht der Esel ja dann daneben bei. Anyway, we we will we will we will stop there this morning, and I will try to collect some more things to go on this. Wir werden so sein. Wir werden jetzt hier heute Morgen erstmal abschließen, und ich werde dann noch versuchen, weitere Punkte hinzuzusammeln. But there there has to be a difference. There has to be a difference between the destruction of Jerusalem and the destruction of Babylon. I mean, spiritually speaking. Aber da muss irgendein Unterschied geben zwischen der Zerstörung Babylons und Jerusalems geistlich gesehen. But as you can see, they're both the same destruction, and they're both because they received the mark of the beast. Und wie wir sehen können, sie sind beide dieselbe Zerstörung, aber und beide erhalten auch das Malzeichen des Tieres. And in Ezekiel chapter 10. What what does the man with the the, the linen do? In Ezekiel 10, what does the man with the linen do? He puts his hand between the altar and he throws the hot coals upon the city, right? He takes the hot coals and throws them on the city of Jerusalem. So, uh, hot coals out of heaven rains upon Babylon. And hot coals upon heaven rains upon Jerusalem. Heiße Kohlen aus dem Himmel kommt über Babylon und Jerusalem. Right, you all see that? Can you see that? So how, how, the, the hmm. thing is, how, how do we differentiate b b between these, right? Frage ist dann, wie können wir zwischen den beiden unterscheiden?
you, you see the sort of dilemma? Könnt ihr das Dilemma sehen? Trying to work out what, what's, what differentiates you being punished by Rome and by Islam. Das, was wir herausfinden müssen, ist, was führt dazu, dass du durch Rom bestraft wirst oder durch den Islam? See, if you, if you die under the destruction of Jerusalem, you die at the hand of Rome. But if you die in the destruction of Babylon, you die at the hand of Islam. But what determines one or the other? Also wenn du ja unter der Zerstörung Jerusalems stirbst, stirbst du durch die Hand Roms. Wenn du aber durch, äh, unter der Zerstörung Babylon stirbst, dann kommst du durch die Hand Islams um. Aber was sozusagen unterscheidet, ob du jetzt in die Gruppe fällst oder in die Gruppe? Okay. So, thoughts, this is why we're doing this class, right? When we go through this, right, do they receive the mark of the beast? Right, if fire and brimstone rains upon Jerusalem, right? Also, bei der Erhaltung ja war das mal sein Mysterius, deswegen ähm, ja, werden sie dann nicht zu Babyloniern. Aber wir haben ja gesehen, Feuer und Schwefel kam auch über Jerusalem. Type must mean anti-type. Aber, aber Typus muss den Antitypus treffen. Rome destroyed Jerusalem. Okay, but it's the east wind, as we read, and the south that destroys Jerusalem. Es war aber Rom, die Jerusalem zerstört haben, und es war der Ostwind und der Süden, die Babylon zerstört haben. Right, so there's something that we, we have to understand about that. What, what, what differentiates between the two? Das ist etwas, was äh, wir darüber verstehen müssen und was die beiden Mächte unterscheidet und die so, beiden Bestrafung. I'm wondering whether this is, sorry, last thought, I'm wondering whether this is this point about the mark of the beast. Und Yes. yes. Und ich äh, frage mich, ob es dieser Punkt ist über dem, das Mahlzeichen des Tieres. Well, th th this is because you have this mindset, but this is because you obey yes. for whatever reason. You have not, not just fear, but but what is just what I give one reason for it. Vielleicht ist das halt so, dass in Babylon diejenigen, die das Übereinstimmung sind mit diesem System, aber diejenigen in Jerusalem, die gehorchen aus Furcht. The destruction of Jerusalem was because they went out and fought against Cestius. Really? You, you have no idea. Most people in, in the Seventh-day Adventist Church are absolutely in agreement with Sunday, they're already the ecumenical movement, they're mingling with Sunday keepers, they will adopt that and think it's the best thing ever. Right? There's even a Seventh-day Adventist church calls it themselves the first church that now worships on Sunday. Also es gibt in der Adventgemeinde sowohl welche, die Sonntag schon äh, annehmen und auch begrüßen, aber es gibt natürlich auch noch welche Adventisten, die das nicht tun, aber nur aus Furcht dann annehmen werden. That, that, okay, that's what we're saying. That's why we're looking at this closely to, under, to differentiate between this and, and this. Also, we must also genau betrachten, wer ist jetzt Jerusalem, wer ist Babylon? Because Babylon is in Jerusalem, right? Okay. Anyway, we've got much to to um, to understand about this. Wir müssen noch viel darüber verstehen. Should we close with prayer? Sollen wir das Gebet abschließen? Tag des Lebens danken. Ich möchte bitten, dass du uns heute bitte helfen mögest, deinen Willen zu tun. Ich möchte auch bitten, dass du uns hilfst, diese Fragen zu beantworten. 
Ich bitte, dass du uns heute durch den Tag führst. Bitte hilf, dass wir uns auch für den Sabbat vorbereiten können. Und hilf, dass durch deinen Heiligen Geist die Wahrheit auf unser Herzen einwirken kann. In Jesu Namen.